Hi there, everybody. It's proverbial light at the end of the tunnel time. Time for the final project. So this is just going to walk through some of the basic expectations so that we're all on the same page. OK, there is a prefab assignment, and the idea is to define the most remote area in Cache County. It might be one area or a set of areas, but the idea is to perform GIS analysis to identify the most remote location in Cache County. However, the remoteness is user-defined, so maybe you want to find the perfect cave to hibernate in. Um, maybe you want to go on a picnic, uh, a donut picnic, and you want to be on a hillside facing south uh, within a mile of a Dunkin' Donuts shop. Maybe you want to map out the perfect place to go snowmobiling or the perfect backcountry skiing where you for sure won't hear snowmobiles. Uh, maybe you're dealing with cell phone availability. It, really the data is going to limit what you can and can't do here um, and your level of passion and persistence in, in acquiring the data that you need is the only limitation. So that brings us to the idea of an alternate analysis. Yes, of course you can do something different. I absolutely welcome it and this is uh, implying that the world is your oyster. Um, you do need to meet the minimum requirements. I'm going to go through those in just a second. Just make sure that you're not just visualizing data. You can't just go get data and then make a map, and that includes digitizing. Um, we need to make sure that you're doing actual geospatial analysis, uh, which means using the geoprocessing tools and working with raster data. So here are the minimum requirements. These are the things that you need to do, the, the requirements that you need to meet for a successful project. Uh, number one, you need to use both vector and raster data. So think elevation or slope, um, and then the vector stuff you should be well acquainted with by now. Um, make sure, like I said, you're not just displaying the data, but you're actually calculating something. And that could include lengths, areas, um, but should also include a suite of tools like buffering and clipping and erasing and reclassifying rasters and um, doing raster calculations. And then you're going to create a map of your results and make sure you're demonstrating all these mad skills that you've um, acquired this semester, like beautiful scale bars with nice round values and tick marks, um, hierarchy, alignments, um, things like that. Uh, and then you're going to write up your process in a format that resembles loosely the lab instructions. I don't expect you to be very detailed, but I do expect you to demonstrate the things that show me that you know what you're talking about. So for the submissions, you're going to turn in two things. Um, number one is going to be an explanation of your results. This is sort of the lab instructions. And then you're going to submit at least one formal map, but you can have more than one. So at the beginning of your instructions, you should tell me what your, your definition of remoteness is or what your project goal was. That should be very clear right at the top. Um, it will look like lab instructions. It should have images and you know bullet points or some kind of structure to it. But remember that we are your audience, um, Peter, Yajie, Matt, myself, um, not intro GIS students. So you don't have to go into laborious detail about how to add data, how to symbolize things. We don't care about that. We want to know about, you know, if you did the slope tool, what units did you choose? Um, how do you know that you did it correctly? How do you know that the results, the things that came out of your tools, how did you evaluate whether they're correct or not? Those, those types of things are what we're going to be looking for. Convince us that you know what you're doing. Uh, you're definitely going to want to include images. And like I said, demonstrate that you were evaluating yourself. So when you ran the erase, what were you expecting to find? And did you get that? Show us a picture and tell us why it's right. It's kind of like the freestyle lab, where you have to define what the tool does and then tell us how, how you used it, something like that. OK, with the formal maps, we've talked a lot about this. If you guys haven't seen the feedback on your labs, haven't opened the rubrics to get my feedback about tick marks and alignments and hierarchy, you should open those up and take a look. Um, a part of your grade will definitely be on, on your cartography. So remember, provide clear spatial context. This can come from choosing the right base map. Um, it can come in the form of an inset map or locator map. Make sure your scale bar has a round value on it 200 meters, not 190 meters, and make sure that every value has a tick mark. Um, I've got YouTube videos about this. If you're curious and don't remember how, shoot me an email. 
Um, pull the base map credits off the base map, but make sure you include credits for all the data shown in your map on the map. And then don't forget the details like text hierarchy and alignments. Okay, grading. You will earn a solid 85% if you do what we asked you to do, those minimum requirements using vector and raster data, great um, kind of multi-stepped processing, um, and then a great presentation of your results. Um, professional, thoughtful, deliberate. You can bump that up to 100% by doing the following things. Um, downloading additional data. You can use the data that we gave you, but go and find something new to add. Um, introduce a new tool. Teach yourself how to do something new or add a digitizing component. Um, create composite layers, and by that I mean maybe you reclassify a raster uh, and then you export the results and convert those to a polygon and then you use those polygons to erase or clip something else that you've buffered. So you're kind of taking your outputs and doing further things to them. Um, and then always a professional, um, easy to read, careful uh, presentation of your results. Sounds so easy, right? Okay, so here's a couple of hints. If you get stuck, try Googling it. If you need data, Google it. Google ArcGIS, free GIS data, with some additional search terms that help focus. Um, use the tool help. So there's a little button in every tool that opens up an arc that says help. Click on that, and it defines what the tool does. If you click on the input, output, or any of the other um, you know, steps in the tool, it'll define what those things are, and that's usually pretty helpful. And then you can just go to the Utah AGRC, and uh, search for data there. That's an easy place to go. I do recommend taking notes as you go. So grab screenshots or snips or whatever you want to call them and kind of build a working journal. Just make sure you go back. If something doesn't work or you end up not doing something if or not pursuing some path of your analysis, delete that stuff out. It's going to be easier. Make sure the final project is focused on what you did and relate it to your project goal. Um, I don't want to see, well, I downloaded this data, and then I spent two days working with it, and then I decided not to use it. I don't care about that. I just want to see what, you, what your final map is and how you got there. So keep it focused. Uh, and make sure you're keeping track of where you're getting your data. It's going to be a lot easier to do that as you're pulling it, even if you end up not using it, than to try and go back and recreate where you got it from. And don't put off until tomorrow what you can start working on today. And I mean this very seriously. Um, I'm going to post a slide with the calendar, the due dates um, on the final project page. Make sure you look at that and you're very aware of when this thing is due. Um, I am dead serious about the, the deadline here. Um, it is due before midnight. If it comes in at 12.01, and what I mean is I didn't realize it was going to take so long to upload. I don't care. I'm very flexible about that all semester long. But when it comes to the final project, Time management is going to be critical. If it comes in after midnight, it will be docked 10%. If it comes in after midnight the next day, it will be docked 20%. And um, after midnight that second day, I won't accept it at all anymore. Along those lines, you need to also remember that if you submit the instructions accidentally back to me, I'm talking about my instructions, um, if you call your thing finalproject.pdf, and you accidentally submit my set of instructions back, you will automatically lose 10%. Um, depending on my mood, I may give you a second chance, but you will pay a penalty. Um, please do not submit an MXD document. If you do, that's what I will grade, and you won't get credit for anything that I might be able to see on the map. Um, so make sure you're submitting things carefully. Check your submissions. You know, Actually look at them after you upload them and make sure they're the, they're the correct thing. Another reason not to wait till the last minute. Okay, if you have any questions about any of this, don't hesitate to ask shannon.belmont at usu.edu um, or reach out to anybody else in the class and have fun. Thanks.